First lake of the year to fish, my fishing techniques. Fishing techniques for the first lake of the year. I check sunrise and sunset position. A calendar to determine where to fish. I soak the flies I'm going to use before I go on the water while I'm putting together my pontoon boat. I check the wind, and if there's a foam line, I try to find it. I locate lake elements. I find the depth of fish by using a fish finder. I troll to find where fish are located. When in doubt, I use a throat pump so I can see what they're actually feeding on and where. Let's look at these in more detail. Sunrise and sunset position. I use a compass to determine where the sun will rise and where it will set on the day before I go fishing. There's a video on this site called Sunrise and Sunset Position that explains this. On the lake, this information can help me determine where the fish might be. I check the fish calendar to determine which lake to fish. I check the temperature and the weather conditions the day before and add it to my fish calendar. This is to determine how early or how late to start. I plan to arrive at the lake at a point where the temperature is about 47 degrees or above. And this is usually around 10 a.m. On the calendar, you can see that I have considered three lakes here. The first lake has good conditions to fish but it's on the coast and hard to get to early in the season because there may be snow on the highway. The second lake has good conditions as well, but it froze the night before, so the lake may not thaw enough for me to fish. The third lake will be my choice for this trip because the wind is blowing in the right direction and the temperature is warm enough for bug activity. It has a UV index of seven out of 10. Since trout can see UV materials at depths, if I need to fish deep, I can use a UV fly, which might increase my odds of success. At the lake, I soak my flies as I put together my pontoon boat. If the fly is casted dry, there may be an air bubble that will appear on it and it will not move naturally in the water. Oddly enough, I've seen an 8% increase in the number of fish caught by doing this. There is a taste and smell video that I talk about in lesson number one. I check the wind and find the foam line. On the lake, I find the direction that the wind is blowing and check for the foam line if there is one. If the foam line is large, I usually fish about three or four feet in front of it as the fish may still be feeding on insects that are trapped in it. You can also use a bug net and dip it through the foam to see what insects may be trapped in it. It will show you the size and type of fly to use. Fish feed into a wind, so I start by casting across the wind so the fish can see the profile of my fly. I also check for bird activity. A lot of times this will tell you when a, where a hatch is occurring on the lake. Locate lake elements. If it is a new lake, I locate lake elements with my fish finder, as taught in lesson number two. You can determine what fly to use in the depth using the information taught in lesson number four. If it is the lake I fished before, I check the location where elements were in the previous years and start there. Find the depth of fish. I use a fish finder to find the depth of fish to help me determine what fly to use and where. This is also taught in lesson number four. Trolling to find where fish are located. If you don't have a fish finder, you can troll to find the depth of fish. So let's look at how you want to troll for fish to find their depth. 
When you start trolling with a pontoon boat, you move about 15 to 20 feet from shore. You get to a depth that you want to get. Typically, I look at for about 6 to 8 feet. I've wet the fly on the pole already, so it'll be ready when we put it into the water. So uh, take the po uh, fly off the pole and just go ahead and throw it out in the water. Then pull out five pieces of line between the reel and the first grommet approximately. Cast it out, place the reel in the pocket on the right of your pontoon boat, and then put the pole between your fins and then begin to row slowly. After about 20 feet, then you'll want to get the pole and pull out another section of line. Put it back and continue to row, row in the same manner. You'll want to do this several times. Each time you're actually letting the line down a little further in the water. Not much, but just enough. And as you row, if the depth is correct, then you'll get a strike. And there you go. Go ahead and bring it in. You'll notice that I'm pulling <clears throat> rather quickly when I bring the line in. In case it's a trophy, he would turn and try to come directly at the boat. So I want to bring the line in as quickly as possible. You notice I have a glove on my right hand. That's to keep the line from uh, going out too quickly between my fingers. When it's a small fish, I just go ahead and release it. Now, the amount of line that you have in your stripping apron is the amount of line you want to use for trolling. To make sure <clears throat> that it is the right amount, place the pole back in the same position and begin to row in the same way. Within a very short distance, you'll catch another fish. And then you can go ahead and bring that in. And now you have the distance of line that you want to put out so that will come down into the area where the fish are actually feeding. Sometimes I think it's better to sit and present when you've figured out where the fish are. In that case you use the same amount of line except you just don't row. You cast the line out and place the pole on one of the pontoons. As you pull the line in, you present about at six inch lengths, and you count each length as it's coming in. Here we'll see that the count actually goes to about 10. That's the depth the fish are at with this length of line. So go ahead and bring it in. Also, you'll notice on my rod that there is a foam device about just, a, just up from the reel. This is a floating device that allows the, the pole to float if it were to fall off the pontoon boat. Now you want to move to another section of the lake and use the same amount of leader you did before and try presenting here. Here you'll notice it was only five poles and then the fish was caught. So now you have the right amount for fishing shallow water and deeper water based on the count of how deep the fish are. So go out and have some fun. Throat pump. If I have no success on several flies and casts, I can use a throat pump to see what fish are eating. And here's how I use one. Number one, use attractor flies like woolly buggers or seal buggers, something that's got some real flash to it, and troll it as shown in the video, trolling to find fish in a lake. Number two, only use a fish that is at least 12 inches in length or more. Keep the fish in the water and in the net when you catch it. Number three, Rinse out the small bottle you have to put the sample in and set it aside. Number four, place the tube of the throat pump in the water and rinse the water through it several times. Pull it out of the water and depress the bulb to remove all water and hold it depressed. Number five, to get the sample from the throat, 
turn the fish upside down and place the tube in its mouth and insert it gently until it will not go any deeper. Release the bulb and slowly move the tube out of the mouth and the contents of the throat will be pulled into the tube. If you feel resistance before you get it in, stop and remove the tube. Then try again. If you still feel you can't get a good sample, let the fish go and catch another one. Number six, fill a small bottle with water and place the tube in the water. Pull the water into the tube using the bulb and release it back into the bottle. Number seven, after you have a good sample and have released the fish, you want to keep the amount of line in the stripping apron the same as it is when you caught the fish. This is the depth of the fish. This is the amount of line you will cast to catch another. Now you need to analyze the contents of the throat pump. Look at the sample in the bottle. If it does not contain any insects, this could mean they are just starting to feed again. Keep fishing the fly you're using, and when you catch another fish, get another sample. If it looks almost empty and something is moving, this is probably zooplankton. We learned about this in lesson number three, spring. If it is a sunny day, the zooplankton will be lower in the water column. You have just found where the fish are located. Continue fishing the fly you have after you have caught several fish, get another sample. If the sample contains mayfly nymphs, then put on a calibatus nymph and fish it from the bottom slowly up to the top of the lake. If you get no action after a few times, then switch to a leech, black if it's early in the day or late in the day, and green during the middle of the day. Fish the leech close to the bottom. If it contains coronamids, then you know to move to a section of the lake that has mud. And then put on a damselfly. Fish it just below the surface. If you don't get any bites, switch to a leech, black in the early part of the day and the late part of the day, and green during the middle of the day, and fish it close to the bottom. If it contains a caddis nymph, put on a caddis nymph imitation on a sinking line and move it slowly horizontally about one foot above the bottom. If you get no action after a short time, switch to a leech, green in color, and move it along the bottom or from the bottom to the top slowly.